Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. This is a bit of a country hop uh, for this video. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. First of all, we have news from Visa. Global payments giant known as Visa has hopped onto the crypto bandwagon in a new job listing. The company says it is looking for a technical product manager for its Visa crypto team. According to the listing, the new full-time employee will be responsible for executing Visa's product strategy within the cryptocurrency ecosystem. The new hire will manage a product roadmap and collaborate with the Visa research team to design and develop new products, they said. Are you passionate about the intersection of payments and cryptocurrency? Are you deeply familiar with permissionless blockchain technology and have a close network of experts in the fast-moving cryptocurrency and fintech ecosystem? Are you excited about the challenge of developing new products for Visa to deliver value to fintechs looking to support cryptocurrencies? Visa is not the only legacy leader warming up to the emerging technology that threatens to leave behind competitors who lack a robust crypto strategy. We heard from JP Morgan Chase. We also heard from, what was the other banking giant something that was in the news the other day anyway the point is uh it took a while but we finally got there the people from visa and i assume mastercard will soon follow suit have come to the realization uh that their systems and products will probably not sell as well unless they end up integrating cryptocurrencies in some sort of way i'm going to i would not be surprised if they are collaborating with other people at the moment already uh, and if we heard, I hope that they don't create their own stable coin. I really hope that they do not. But I have a strange feeling that if Visa doesn't create their own stable coin, they're probably going to use another stable coin. I don't think any of them are not like as trusted, but we haven't seen like a stable coin that's kind of like come out to dominate the other ones except for Tether. But Tether's also been out for a couple of years. So that kind of makes a bit of sense. Anyway, uh, Visa is getting into the cryptocurrency game. I would not hold my breath as far as them uh, accepting or using even Lumens or XRP or any other cryptocurrency. This is a, a major giant in the space, uh, and they are probably going to try and do everything that they can to keep as much of the money in their pockets as possible without especially uh, not having to lower fees for their customers. Kind of interesting, though. That means within the next couple of years, uh, we would probably, if you're still using Visa and MasterCard by then, uh, have like instantaneous payments and transfers all around the world. It'd be, it's kind of interesting to see how this is all um, unfolding if you will, because a lot, I mean, anyway, just my own opinion on the thing. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, we hop to South Korea. Kakao Core or Corp Core is reportedly planning a crypto wallet to messenger integration after the commercial launch of the Clayton, K-L-A-Y-T, and I would say Clayton, Clayton pat platform. South Korea's biggest internet corporation known as Kakao will reportedly integrate its crypto wallet in its messaging app, Kakao Talk. Local financial news agency FN News reported on the 18th of March. According to the report, more than 44 million South Korean Kakao Talk users will be able to send peer-to-peer -peer transactions using Kakao's crypto-powered wallet. The South Korean messaging giant will reportedly integrate the wallet in Kakao Talk after the launch of the blockchain platform Clayton's commercial service, a spinoff of Kakao subsidiary GroundX. Recently, Bloomberg reported that the company will conduct another ICO after the other one would also raise 90 million and they're looking to raise another 90 million US dollars. According to FN News, Clayton is scheduled for a commercial launch at the end of June 2019. Previously, Cointelegraph had reported that Kakao spent more than $57 million on new technology, including blockchain and artificial intelligence. We've also heard, I mean, uh, hmm. I, I, hmm. It's very difficult to put it into words now. Uh, it was interesting before when we had just like one or two companies were like, oh my gosh, well, they're integrating cryptocurrency, but we kind of, you see, and I see that it, crypto's being integrated into everywhere. There's still no exact information as to what they're going to, uh, what's the word, support on their wallet. This is also apparently uh, unconfirmed and speculation, but I mean, if you're running, if you've already run a $90 million ICO, I assume that there probably is a cryptocurrency somewhere around there, especially if they're as big as Kakao. So uh, I would assume that on their platform, they're probably going to have the Kakao token. I, I have no idea what it's going to even be called, uh, but I think it's, I think it would be a little weird if they did not integrate other cryptocurrencies onto the platform, at least uh, probably not in the very beginning. But we already have from Kakao, we already have information from 
uh, Kick, Telegram. Uh, we also have uh, Facebook, which is also tied into this as well because Facebook does own WhatsApp and they do own Messenger and they do own Instagram, I think I want to say. Uh, but it seems that Facebook is also trying to integrate their cryptocurrency into WhatsApp and probably also into, uh, yep, here we go, Facebook Messenger and Instagram as well. Uh, this is going to be a, a battle of the platforms, kind of. It's, it's I mean, <sighs> we'll see exactly how this ends up going. Uh, I still believe, and I said before, I think that many of these platforms would try to launch before summertime, and this one apparently is going to be happening uh, by the end of June. It just seems like the right time for everyone to try and get their stuff out there. Which one of them is going to be dominant? I mean, I could kind of see them all uh doing pretty well i mean they're pretty self-sufficient on their own i'm spending too much time on this let's move on so now we do a a, a, a multi-country hop what's happening around the world is uh thank goodness it's it's a bit of a uh of a crap show nicest way of saying it however uh it's finally chugging along even though this is kind of a complete mess uh first in canada the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada, or the IROC, and the Canadian Securities Administrators, or the CSA, have jointly published a communique speaking input from the country's crypto industries playing players regarding regulation. So what pretty much happened was that a couple of weeks ago, it's, it's it maybe even a couple of months at this point, there was a cryptocurrency exchange called um, Quadriga CX. Uh, apparently, the CEO passed away. He held the private keys to the actual cryptocurrency exchange. Only he held it. No one else knows exactly what happened to it, allegedly. So we have heard uh, $145 million worth of crypto completely disappeared. And now the people or the regulators in Canada, it's really weird how you need like a tragedy for people to actually get something together. You know, no one thinks beforehand, hey, let's, you know, make sure that things like this don't happen. Because all this money went missing, I think they may have found like a couple million dollars of it in some other hot wallets or whatever the case might have been. The point is, now regulators are jumping in in Canada uh, to try and make sure that the space is secure for investors and so and so and so, and no more corruption and no more blah, 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 blah. Uh, once again, it, it, it takes a massive loss for regulators to kind of say, okay, now we need to actually regulate this. India uh, is, as far as we know right now, it says... The Reserve Bank of India, the country's central bank, issued a directive in April of last year, barring banks from dealing with cryptocurrencies. The order was met with fierce resistance and a wave of lawsuits from industry stakeholders. After the lawsuits started happening, uh, it was between the, the Supreme Court of India and the Reserve Bank of India. It was kind of swapping back and forth. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Supreme Court of India has ruled that, yeah, that, that the government should come up with a clear regulatory framework designed to fix the mess. Uh, they were given four weeks, and if I am not mistaken, that happened towards the beginning of this month or the end of February, which means that in all logic hood, logically, uh, India should, within the next seven or eight days, be giving their people in the country some type of regulatory clarity as to exactly what's going to happen with cryptocurrencies. I think, myself that the market could be waiting for this to actually uh, kick off, for this to actually happen. India, China, and there's one other country that I can't think about at the, at the moment, are major players. In, yeah, India, Russia, China. Major players in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, they've all been uh, slightly barred from dealing with or using cryptocurrencies inside of their country. We've heard from their leaders or from their governments that uh, while these things are not illegal, you can't use them. While they're not illegal, you can't transact in them. While they may not be as legal as they once were, uh, you can't buy things. Or it's, 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 it's really weird, not even a gray area. It's like a, like a dark brown, weird, muddy area that the government just kind of won't give proper regulation on. It appears, unless I'm mistaken, like I said, we had this news a while ago. If I think... And we'll see by this time next week, hopefully. I think India is not going to ban cryptocurrencies. I think there's going to be a very heavy restriction, probably the same exact thing that we're seeing from Russia with their drafts as they're, as they're trying to go forward. As far as uh, you can't do, like, you can only buy or have a certain amount of crypto that you are purchasing per year. I assume that India will do the exact same thing. I would think it very weird if India outright banned cryptocurrency simply because the Ripple team and also the Cardano team now have offices in India. 
I would assume they wouldn't have offices there, or rather, I th hmm. I would assume that they would have first wind of a ban happening, and probably we would have had news that the Ripple office and the Cardano, whatever they have opened up in India, have closed down and they're moving to another country. That could be a huge indication. I would find it very unsurprising as well if India takes the same exact route as other countries and kind of um only allows a couple of cryptocurrencies. We've seen a couple of countries who have banned crypto and then re-allowed it, but they've only allowed certain cryptocurrencies, and these are usually are uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and like one or two other coins that I can't think of off the top of my head. It would be incredible if India only allows certain cryptocurrencies, and they are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, XRP, Cardano, and two other random ones, and maybe some stable coins. We'll see. We're getting very, very close to it. We also have news from Mexico. We had some information about this a couple of maybe about a week ago at this point, um, Banxico, they released cryptocurrency regulations, but apparently they're so... Stringent is not the word that I'm looking for. They're, 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 they're very ridiculous for the people in the country. They make it very difficult to be able to do things. It's kind of like the other country that we had before. Was it... I want to say the Philippines. I feel like that's wrong. It's somewhere in Southeast Asia who implemented a thing that you need to have like several million dollars to be able to like start an ICO or like start like a futures trading thing as opposed to like starting your own business, which only costs, I think, like $17,000. Very weird. And it just goes along with what I normally say. The countries that could benefit the most from this are they have their hands around the neck of crypto the tightest and is really a shame because they could be flourishing the most kind of is what it is um israel at the moment i mean they're like a, a a cryptocurrency blockchain uh tech hub i think a lot of what it comes down to as well uh my opinion is that they're probably going to try and uh get everything as far as money laundering know your customer and anti-money laundering laws in line with other countries but i don't see anything hyper negative happening in uh in Israel, like if you watch like documentaries and stuff like that, like where the cryptocurrency space is going, typically Japan, South Korea, and Israel are usually the most spoken about because this is where they're the most, these are the most friendly, friendliest countries when it comes to fintech. Here's another article on the, it's, it's apps. I mean, we, we spoke about this yesterday. I, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, how you could not, I mean, I don't know. I don't know nothing about the economy. I can't really say too much, uh, but one would assume if you see this thing spreading like wildfire and everyone is getting into cryptocurrencies, that you would think, let me open the doors properly uh, to people in crypto to my country so that we can kind of get some of that uh, good old digital money. On top of this as well, uh, we heard a couple, maybe a month ago at this point, that Venezuela has, and this is why I thought it was the most ridiculous thing in the entire world, that Bitcoin is still not above $8,000. Uh, Venezuela pretty much came out and said that if you are trying to send money into Venezuela, the only way to do so is through their uh, cryptocurrency, the the um, the Petro, through their actual like money, like paper currency. And also the only other two things that are allowed are Bitcoin and, if I'm not mistaken, Litecoin. Uh that on the side as, as to why these prices haven't completely exploded. Uh, they've also started, they rather they've announced that there is a 15% fee if you're trying to send cryptocurrencies into the country, which is completely ridiculous. There was a thing right here. The ruling defines commissions that range from 25 cents at the minimum rate to around 15% of the funds transferred to the, in cryptocurrencies. In addition to limits, in addition, it limits the sending of remittances to a monthly amount equivalent to 10 petros, a cryptocurrency created by the Venezuelan government. I mean, I just don't know at this point. I don't uh, own or control my own country. I'm not a a leader, so I can't say exactly what's going on. But so many of the places that could be flourishing are looking like they may be trying to wither away. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, I think out of all of this, I mean, we know that Bitcoin and Litecoin and Dash are legal in Venezuela. Uh, hopefully this continues for quite some time. Uh, Mexico isn't in the news as often, but the fact that they've released this information isn't too friendly to their economy. Uh, and I'm most excited about, to be honest, is about India. I mean, with 1 billion people having access to a a market that is as large as cryptocurrency, like when, when we typically get figures of how many people are in cryptocurrency, 
is usually in anywhere, people believe it's anywhere from around 25 million to around 50 million people collectively. Uh, and if the doors happen to open to another billion people, uh, well, that's just going to be absolutely dandy for the cryptocurrency space. Let's hope we'll see not too much longer to wait. I hope as, as this was like a mandate from the actual government, one could only assume that they are actually going to uh, give proper regulation this time because they've been talking about doing it since around 2017. What have you. Next up. Leading Swiss online retailer Digitech Galaxis has announced that it is now accepting cryptocurrencies according to a press release that happened yesterday. Per the announcement, the shop is now accepting Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash, Satoshi's Vision, Ethereum, XRP, Binance Coin, Litecoin, Tron, Neo, and Omise Go for purchases worth over 200 US dollars. The release further claims that the shop hosts around 2.7 million products, ranging from wheat beer all the way to gaming PCs. The new payment method was reportedly jointly developed as part of a pilot series or project with project series uh, with Swiss payment processor Data Trans and in collaboration with Danish crypto payments startup Coinify. The system opens 15 minutes time windows for customers during which the crypto exchange rate doesn't change in order to make the payment with a 1.5% fee. As part of its move towards crypto, the company also added a crypto wallet category to e-commerce platform, a company with a dedicated guide, and released a blog under the name Diamonds or Gold are better suited to get rid of illicit money. Okay. In the latter post, the company's chief innovation officer, Oliver Heron, admitted that he is not fully convinced of the advantages of blockchain over database uh, systems. He said, but maybe because I haven't invested enough time in fully understanding how the blockchain, that is a problem a lot of people have. If you have anyone who makes fun of you because they uh, don't like that you're buying cryptocurrencies, that you're in the cryptocurrency space, ask them a couple of questions. Ask them what a blockchain is. Ask them what SHA-256 is. Or ask them, uh, I mean, really, really simple, basic questions about the cryptocurrency space. And you will come to realize rather quickly that they're making fun of you because they are embarrassed because they have no idea what they're talking about. The news of today, anyway, is... Uh, they're apparently one of the largest online retailers. I found their website here. It actually is. I didn't click through the entire thing, but apparently they have, uh, millions upon millions of things. And I tried digging a bit further to actually look for where it said that they had, or rather were accepting cryptocurrencies at the very bottom. It just says Maestro, MasterCard, PayPal, blah, 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 VPay and Visa. Didn't see the crypto thing. It does say after 200 uh euros or us dollars is kind of the equivalent of um when you would have access to be able to pay in crypto but i did look around and i found in a couple of other uh german or german language websites i found multiple of them i thought it would be ridiculous to have like 15 tabs open over here uh but apparently it is a thing this is actually happening one of the largest uh or rather the largest swiss online retailer is now accepting cryptocurrencies uh, adoption happens one step at a time but i mean these are very quick steps that we're walking up very quick uh i still think it's weird that the crypto market hasn't moved up uh in 2017 i think we had overstock and maybe one other place that was accepting cryptocurrencies we now had there are at least 400 remember last year when we had that i think it wasn't i want to say poland poland or slovenia i know they're not close together but i can't remember which country that it was and they opened up like a crypto mall where everything had to be paid for in crypto. Uh, we have all these things happening back to back to back and adoption is rapidly, I mean, adoption's here. However, the prices still don't seem to react. At the moment, uh, we're in the red kind of ish last 24 hours. It's not that bad. Bitcoin's still over 4,000. I myself... I'm still ex expecting a drop. Uh, to be fair, volume is actually up yesterday. I think the volume was around 7 billion. We're at 9.3 billion right now. Typically, when the volume is bubbling like this, is a, usually sometimes an indication of uh, where the prices are going to go. And it's usually up if there's a lot of uh, commotion happening in the volume. Because before, a couple of months ago, our volume for Bitcoin was around $4 billion. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, why is the volume so low? So uh yeah no prices are up no prices are really down at the moment cardano's up for some odd reason that i haven't really figured out right now tezos 
is also not in the news, but it's also up right now. Um, the coin that I told you about that was pumping, that I told everyone to worry about, uh, is now dropping. So if you happen to put your money into that, I hope you got it out before I made this video. Anyway, that is definitely going to do it for this video. Very weird. Uh, everything. Space to we're in. Uh, at least we know, even though we are walking through muddy waters, uh, countries around the world are essentially being forced to give uh, regulation or some type of clarity as to exactly what's happening. Uh, while it may not be the best information that we are looking for, uh, it is still nice to see that they are going to give information that is needed and that uh, we see all around the world uh, that crypto is becoming a dominant force, even when it does not seem like it because we tend to focus on prices too much. Uh, understand that crypto is not going anywhere. And even if no other news today, just remember the fact that multiple countries around the world are uh, falling over themselves to give proper crypto regulation. And I mean, also, you can buy all this stuff in cryptocurrency now. I hope everyone is having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. I do appreciate that. Is thought it was kind of okay. It has yeah, it has to be stabilized. I was wondering why the third third leg was there. I'm gonna scroll by that. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai, Brady Niels, L Doug. Arthur Yaku, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Nick Mangialavori, Travis Haynes, Yasha Harari, Anthony Charles, Nick Kanaya, singer, songwriter, Mike Savitz, Wise Night Owl, Joey Carafa, Crypto Joe, Jim Gardner, Jared Schneider, Jeremy Fox, Amy Starsheen, Richie Rich the Third, Jeffrey Ramsey, Cody, Carl Burchinoff, Paxis, Jeffrey Dam, Nicholas, One Earth, One Piece, One Love, Setsuna, Minting Coins, Cryptnotic, RF Dusty, and Shaolin Fried Rice.com. Thank you all very, very much for all of your support. I do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. S See you.